This is Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. The more we learn about this star, the weirder it gets. It's not a giant star, only about 1.7 times the diameter of the sun and twice its mass. Its brightness comes from its proximity, just 8.5 light years away. We're basically stellar neighbors. But nearly two centuries ago, we noticed something odd about Sirius. In 1809, Friedrich Bessel, a renowned mathematician, took charge of an astronomical observatory at Twain. After years of studying data that spanned eight decades, he noticed something strange. Sirius was wobbling. Back then, astronomy wasn't about looking through telescopes. It was about examining endless star catalogues and paperwork. Bessel dedicated decades to this task, and at 60, he announced that Sirius's right ascension was changing, indicating it must have an unseen companion. Right ascension, like celestial longitude, helps us map stars in the sky. Bessel realized that Sirius must have a hidden companion, a dark star. And he was right. In 1862, hobby astronomer Alvin Clark spotted this companion, later named Sirius B. It was small, decout, and close enough to Sirius A to be hidden in its glare. We named the brighter star Sirius A and the dimmer one Sirius B, or the puppy. Back in Alvan Clark's day, dim stars weren't shocking, but more data showed that Sirius B was peculiar. We knew the orbital period of the Sirius system was about 50 years, but we needed more details. Enter the HR diagram, a plot of brightness versus color. This diagram tells us a lot about stars based on where they fall. Since Sirius B was so dim, we expected it to be a low-mass red dwarf. But in 1910, data revealed Sirius B was almost as massive as the Sun, three times what we expected. Seriously, how could this tiny star be as massive as the Sun, but so dim? In 1914, Walter Adams measured its surface temperature at 25,000 Kelvin. Over four times hotter than the sun, Sirius B wasn't a red dwarf. It was hot, blue, and incredibly dim. The Stefan Boltzmann law helps us understand this. If a star is hot but dim, it must be tiny. Sirius B with the mass of the sun was compressed into an object the size of Earth. Imagine compressing something as massive as a mountain into a semi-trailer. It was a density humans had never conceived. Famous astronomer Arthur Eddington initially dismissed this idea, but later came to terms with it as quantum mechanics developed. Eventually, we found other stars, like Sirius B, now known as white dwarfs, stellar remnants from stars like our sun. Sirius B was once more massive than Sirius A, but it shed its outer layers and shrank to its current state. White dwarfs form after stars shed their outer layers, leaving behind a becker surrounded by a nebula. Sirius B's nebula dissipated long before humans evolved, which is why we don't see it today. Rewinding time. About 130 million years ago, Sirius B was a giant star, likely 40,000 times wider than it is now. It would have enveloped Sirius A in a way that's hard to imagine, yet, their orbits are highly elliptical today, which contradicts what we know about tidal forces making orbits circular. This leaves us with a big question. How did Sirius A and B end up with such unusual orbits? We're missing a piece of the puzzle, and it's an exciting mystery for future astronomers to solve. After all, astronomy is all about playing the long game. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more amazing videos.